All right, Psalm 1, let's call this week's set of lessons one way, and we'll tell the story of why later. But first of all, this is a chapter presumably written by David in which he says some very simple but profound things. First of all, blessed is the man who does not fall into a certain progression, meaning he does not either walk, sit, or stand with those of shady or questionable character, going back to some things that we looked at in terms of the law, understanding that the alternative that David offers or whoever penned this song offers to keeping close company with people of questionable character is focusing on the law of the Lord and not simply doing it out of obligation, but doing it in a way that opens us up to the counsel that it offers, the thing that we emphasized in going through the law. It's one thing to look at it as a set of do's and don'ts, but it's another thing to understand the wisdom in its counsel, understanding that people spend top dollar trying to find top counseling to get them through the difficulties that they face in life. And so in God's word, what David has found as a soldier, not a scholar, is that there is a lot of wisdom and value, not only for dealing with the adversity he had to deal with in family life, understanding he was kind of the black sheep of his family, highly skilled, but not highly respected until he was anointed by God and brought into another place where his skills brought him into the presence of the king, but it also got him ostracized when the king, as we talked about in David's story, began to feel intimidated by David's potential. And so David is helping us understand something that he was going to say at the end of the psalm, which is the person who chooses not to keep company with those who cut corners on integrity, but chooses to focus on the ways in which God's laws can actually counsel him into reaching, as we've said it before, it can sound cheesy, his potential is the one who is going to be like a tree planted, not just anywhere, but in stable places. And that's the distinction he is going to draw between quick returns on investment and those slow returns, because he is going to say the wicked may prosper, but that is a temporary kind of success. And understand, it's not all that different from what we have in the way of wisdom from some of our elders, especially in the urban neighborhoods where they'll say, fast money leaves fast. And that is street wisdom that's not all that different from Wall Street wisdom. Understanding that I ran across a quote from Warren Buffett quoted by The Motley Fool, a famous investing site. This says some old school principles of investing are still enduring truths on the stock market as they quote, Warren Buffett as saying, the stock market is a device to transfer money from the impatient to the patient. And so if it actually is David writing Psalm number one, understand how his success matured over time because he started out as an outcast in life, talented but ignored. And even after his talents got him the spotlight, they simply got him more grief as well. Thus our title, One Way, which comes from an old series called The Wire, in which one of the main villains basically confronts a security guard who's just trying to do his job. And as the security guard tries to reason with the man who is simply taking a piece of candy from the store, but he's doing it to prove a point, the security guard basically says, look, I'm not trying to step you, meaning he is not trying to disrespect this man who he knows is a shot caller in that neighborhood. He says, but I got a family and I got a job and you openly stealing on my job is something I simply can't ignore to which that young shot caller says, you want it to be one way. At which point the security guard is like, what? And he says, you want it to be one way. And again, still confused, the security guard is like, stop saying that, to which the shot caller says, you want it to be one way, but it is the other, helping him to understand that no matter how bad that security guard might have wanted the neighborhood to function one way, that shot caller was saying, even though that might have been the right way, the hood is actually gonna function another. Likewise, in Psalm 1, David is reminding us that God is calling shots on a completely different level. And no matter how much we might want success to come one way, success with the kind of stability that he ensures may actually come another. Something that really takes us back to a lesson we might have noticed in the line of Israel's kings. All successful men, some successful with stability, some successful with a whole lot of drama. The latter, uh, much like that hood shot caller, able to uh, reach success in Israel on their own terms, but never genuinely finding the peace in a kingdom or a rule that lasted only so long. But uh, men like David, allowing God to take them through what seemed to be a more difficult path, much like Warren Buffett noticed, ended up with a level of success that actually came along with more stability, the kind of stability that God was willing to ensure. And so in some ways, the Psalms are giving us a deeper look at old lessons 
because even though we have seen the difference between kings who had enduring success and those who had fleeting, temporary, or tragic success, what we're getting a chance to look at in the Psalms is a deeper look into the mind and heart of kings whose success God was willing to ensure.